Palm Springs is undeniably one of the most talked about movies of the last year. A fiercely original riff on the oversaturated time loop genre, starring Andy Sandberg and Kristen Milioti as two wedding guests, Niles and Sarah. The big twist revealed early in the film, of course, is that Niles has already been trapped in the time loop for some time when Sarah also gets pulled into it by way of a vortex in a cave. Consequently, ever since the film came out, fans have speculated on exactly how long Niles spends in the loop before finally being set free with Sarah at the film's end. So, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and this is How Many Days Does Niles Relive in Palm Springs? Number 6. Stage 1 – The Primary Days So, let's start with the simplest assessment first and foremost, that being calculating the number of days that Niles spends caught in the time loop in the linear continuity of the movie, from the day that Sarah joins the time loop to the day they both manage to break free. Here we have day 1, where Sarah is sucked into the vortex, day 2, where Sarah freaks out and tries to visit the cave during the day, day 3, when Sarah drives to Austin and then goes to sleep, day 4, when Sarah kills herself and Niles by driving into a truck, day 5 when Niles explains the situation to Sarah at the bar and they talk about Roy, sex and karma to the end of the day, and then there's day 6 where Sarah's attempt to break the loop by acting selflessly fails so she decides to goof off with Niles. Here's where things start getting complicated though. After this is a montage that depicts Niles and Sarah basically committing to the repetition of the loop and just having fun with it. However, the editing makes it difficult to ascertain a concrete passage of time throughout the montage, as we're not always shown Niles or Sarah waking up to mark a new day, and the changing costumes and time of day leave things a little ambiguous. Between their various shenanigans though, including crashing a plane, performing an elaborate dance at the bar, getting tattoos, planting a bomb in the wedding cake, and finally having sex, it seems that either 7 or 8 days have passed. Given the sheer amount of things that happen in this montage, let's just settle on this bringing us up to day 14. At this point then, the film briefly resumes to a more conventional, easy to follow continuity for day 15 onwards, where Sarah runs in front of a truck after learning that Niles has actually hooked up with her before. Next, the movie depicts 7 days from the separate perspectives of Niles and Sarah after she takes off. Now this isn't to say that these 7 days are all consecutive or concurrent, but they are days that we objectively know take place. So just to add these on, day 16, Niles finds Sarah missing, slash she heads to the cafe to learn about quantum physics. Day 17, Niles searches for her in the desert while she studies more. Day 18, Niles lounges around in his own, and Sarah's studying starts to pay off. Day 19, Niles freaks out at Sarah's family and passes out while Sarah studies the cave. Day 20, Niles realises that Sarah is sleeping with Abe, and Sarah skypes with a scientist. Day 21, Niles attends the wedding again, and Sarah blows up the goat. By day 22, Niles drives to see Roy, and Sarah isn't featured. Things line up again for day 23, where Sarah wakes Niles up and explains her plan to exit the time loop, which of course is successful by the day's end. But there's so, so much more to this movie than the mere 23 day linearity. I mean, what about all of those minor days briefly shown or mentioned only verbally? Well, number 5, Stage 2. Minor days and days mentioned. One of the most entertaining aspects of the movie is the various quick cutaways and small slivers of dialogue which confirm the many, many wild experiences that Niles has lived through during the time loop. So, let's dig in. Early on, Niles mentions that he's quote, done a lot of suicides. Though there's no wider hint at the number of times that he has killed himself in the past, given the many different types of suicide and the likelihood that he's repeated some methods, it is reasonable to believe that he's probably offed himself at least 100 different times, so that's 100 plus different days. Then he's shown being hunted down by Roy, who is seen killing him in 5 different ways, being shot with a bow, electrocuted, waterboarded, whipped and burned, though it seems rather unlikely that these are the only times Roy has murdered him. So let's just say for argument's sake that Roy has also killed him about 100 times. Niles also mentions that Roy lives about a two hour drive from Palm Springs, and so only comes around every few weeks. So if Roy takes two weeks for an assassination attempt, that's 100 times 14, which comes to another 1,400 days. And then there's all the sex. Niles confirms to Sarah that he's had sex with Daisy, Dala, and Jerry, and also tried it on with Tala, which with five days of planning per person and perhaps a more concentrated 10 day failed effort, brings us to a plus 25 days. But the biggest boost comes from Niles saying that he's had sex with Sarah, quote, like a thousand times. And even if he's not being literal, the implication is that they've hooked up a few hundred times in the very least, so let's say 300. 
Add to this a few early days when Niles had to figure out how to hook up with Sarah in a single day, let's add on another 10 days for that, and we're at 310 days for Sarah hookups alone. And let's not forget that Niles also talks about the time he quote, smoked a bunch of crystal and made it all the way to Equatorial Guinea, which let's add on another day for. The total minor days seen or mentioned then comes to 1,836 days, which combined with the linear 23 days of the main story becomes a running total of 1,859 days or just over 5 years. And now we're really getting into the nitty gritty as we consider the days merely implied. So, number 4, stage 3, the days implied. There's a general implication from Niles' world weary attitude that he's been trapped in the loop for a long time, having basically committed the routines of this one day to his memory. He can hit a perfect bullseye at the bar, knows exactly what his girlfriend Misty is going to say, and so on. However, it would be over generous to suggest that he committed actual days to getting these things right, rather than them simply being a byproduct product of reliving the same day for years and years on end. One of Niles's more interesting and subtle assertions emerges though when mentioning his partying with Roy, which he says was quote, back in the early days before I'd really acquainted myself with everyone. We're therefore led to assume that he intimately knows everybody at the wedding, and going by the average American wedding party size of 80 people, we'll give him an average of 3 days with each person, so that's another 240 days. Add to this the fact that Niles clearly knows the bar patrons very well, and we never see more than about a dozen people at the bar, so going by the 3 days per person rule again, that's another 36 days. It's also suggested late in the film that Niles has spent a lot of time with Spuds, the bearded good nut who lives in the desert. Their easygoing banter then makes it quite believable that Niles has spent many a night hanging out and getting blitz with the guy while listening to his story, so let's add another 100 days on for that. And finally, we can't forget the time that Niles and Sarah spent learning that goofy dance that they performed in the bar, and that's clearly another 5 days, right? Well, then these incidental implied days come to a total of 381 days, which in addition to the prior 1,859 days, amounts to a new running total of 2,240 days, or just over 6 years. However, there is one biggie that we haven't calculated that, and that's that we need to consider one of the trickier to calculate aspects of the story, how long Sarah Sarah spent studying quantum physics. Number 3, Stage 4, How Long Sarah Spent Studying Quantum Physics As mentioned earlier, when Sarah leaves Niles, she begins studying, and by the time she figures out how to escape the time loop, it's clear that she's amassed an intimidating expertise in quantum physics. In an interview with E!, director Max Barbacow confirmed that Sarah studied long enough to get quote, the equivalent of two PhDs in physics and quantum theory. In reality, this would take someone 8 to 9 years, but without the formalities of official doctoral research, including long term breaks and the process of defending your thesis, let's shrink this by two thirds and say that Sarah spent a solid 3 years night and day becoming a quantum physics expert. The film takes an intentionally vague approach to the physics based mechanics of Sarah and Niles' escape, so this is virtually impossible to guess with any accuracy, but clearly Sarah's vast base of knowledge was acquired over a lengthy period of applied learning. Adding those 3 years to our total of 2,240 days then comes to a new total of 3,335 days, or over 9 years. But as fun as all of this maths has been, we actually do have to consider the thoughts of the filmmakers themselves, particularly writer Andy. Sierra, who has offered up his own shocking estimate. Number 2, Stage 5, What the Writer Says. If you thought some of the previous calculations erred on the generous side in terms of sheer length, well, there's actually a reason for that. In an interview with Decider, screenwriter Andy Sierra confirmed that Niles had in fact spent decades trapped in the time loop rather than mere years or even just a single decade. He said, quote, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it exactly, but Niles has been in there for over 40 years. There are versions of the script where, mainly when Sarah comes in, I put titles in of how much time has passed. The main thing I hope got across was that a lot of time has passed, a lifetime of memories has passed basically." End quote. That is certainly a drastic multiplier from our current estimate of about 9 years. And while audiences of course aren't duty bound to adhere to what the writer is saying here, you know, death of the author and all that, there is actually a single scene in the film which seems to support what he is saying. Number 1. And finally, Niles's Big Confession. The most telling scene in the entire movie takes place at almost exactly the midway point. When Niles and Sarah are having a campfire heart to heart shortly before they have sex for what Sarah believes to be the first time. When Sarah asks Niles about his life before the loop, namely his job, 
he replies that he just can't remember, adding, quote, wow, it's been such a long time. Considering that people tend to remember important details about their lives for years and even decades after the fact, it totally tracks that Niles would have to have resided within the loop for around 40 years for the memories to degrade to such an extent, even taking into account his daily drinking habit. As the writer said, quote, a lifetime of memories has passed, adding considerable gravity to Niles' arc throughout the film. And given that the filmmakers have also confirmed that the movie was intended to be an allegory for depression, which has a tendency to warp the passage of time in people's minds, it really is quite a perfect, if grim, metaphor. So there you have it, Niles spent at least 40 years trapped in that time loop, and we've only inferred a decade of that time from the film itself. So who knows what else Niles got up to in that time, and hell, the writer doesn't even seem totally married to that figure, so settling instead on a lifetime, it could even be a decade or two higher than that. So that's our breakdown of Palm Springs. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you think these numbers are spot on, and did you enjoy the movie? I've been Josh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.